in today's episode. Today is your lucky day because I'm gonna be giving away uh, a free kick sample. So it lasts a while. Pew, pew. Now the idea. Be Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the newest episode of my channel. It's been a while, but today's episode is possibly the best one or definitely one of the best episodes that I've ever done. And I'm honestly not just saying that to create a clickbait thumbnail or like just keep you watching the rest of the episode. Today's episode is gonna be a good one. It's something that I know very few, a handful of people, uh, music producers and like mixing engineers and mastering engineers have been doing, but in a while from now, few months, a year or two max, uh, everybody's gonna be doing it. So without further ado, let's check out what I'm gonna be breaking down in today's episode. just heard are two unreleased songs. I only have them on SoundCloud for now. You'll be able to go take a listen yourselves if you want to. They're gonna be on Spotify very, very soon. Um, one of them is going to be on Spotify uh, June 23rd. The reason I'm saying that is because uh, after this video or while you're watching this video, I will want you to do some A B comparisons of like different productions across different genres and across different eras. I will need you to compare uh, the songs that I just showed you, which they will be on SoundCloud, uh, to I don't know like your favorite uh, productions this year or last year. Uh, for me, that would be uh, Bad Omens, Bring the Horizon. Spirit Box, Wage War, Memphis Mayfire, and bands like that that have records that they put out either this or last year. And then I would want you to compare the same mixes with older metal uh, productions to see the massive progression that the metal productions have had in the past couple years. And then lastly, and super important, super, super important step, I want you to compare old mixes, old metal mixes and new metal mixes to modern pop mixes. And why, why am I saying that? Because pop mixes uh, all these years have been far more superior uh, in terms of quality, loudness, clarity, richness, you name it. Either you like pop music or not, uh, we have to face the fact that pop productions have always been far more superior than the metal or rock or alternative ones. And to summarize my point, uh, why I want you to do that is because I want you to see that the evolution of metal and rock has led to uh, heavy music sounding almost as good as pop music, if not equally good. So let's do some A-B tests and then I'll show you the secret behind that evolution. So the quality here in this video, I'm really sorry about it, but it's probably gonna suck because uh, I'm playing music from a streaming platform, which is being recorded into my shitty internal uh, recording software, which is then going to be uploaded on YouTube. So I want you to do the same test. Uh, if not while watching the video, you can do the same test after you watch the video or whenever you have time. So for starters, what I want you to listen to is just uh, do a comparison of uh, the production quality and the production value and the general, general loudness of everything. I just want you to compare the quality and the production value and the general loudness of uh, the two productions that I'm going to be going back and forth.
know you'd think I can't be objective at that, uh, and you're right, uh, but I dare you to do the same test yourself, and I honestly can't pick a winner, or at least I can't pick a clear winner. Both mixes sound super balanced, super punchy, the low end on both is amazing. So let's move on to uh, do another comparison. I'm gonna compare my other song. So again, two different songs, uh, way heavier. There's differences in songwriting, of course, which also make you perceive the production as different. But if you just narrow it down on the basics, like how good the kick sounds, the snare sounds, the guitars, I again, I don't think I can honestly pick a winner. Clearly, again, in terms of production value. Uh, let's do one last test uh, with Bad Omens. That was the first type of AB, comparing uh, my new mixes uh, with the new methods that I'm using that I'm gonna break down for you in a second with my favorite alternative rock metal record of all time. So now that we've established that like my mix is at least super close, if not equally uh, good to the Bottoms record, I'm gonna be comparing uh, my mix with some older metal mixes. So this is a song that I love, a band that I love, uh, and this song isn't even old. It came out at uh, 2019, uh, early 2019, and you'll see the difference in production. And I think now my point uh, will become very clear to you. You can clearly tell that the kick and the snare don't have nearly the same punch. And also, uh, the snare sounds like it's lacking uh, a lot of top end as well. So these two production, these two mixes came out four years apart. And this is why I've been saying that uh, the last couple of years, like, like the last two or three years max, the metal and rock sound has evolved massively. So that concludes the second part of the comparison. And for the third part of this comparison, I'm going to compare the new uh, modern metal mixes that I like. And I'll compare that to a really, really good modern pop mix. Now, I don't know if you know an artist named Fletcher. She's became quite popular recently, but I know her productions are amazing. And I'm not ashamed to actually admit that uh, when I was writing apart from the song Dark, in particular the verse, uh, I kind of got inspired by her song Sting, which I also think has an amazing production. clear and rich are uh, the low end and the vocals in Fletcher's song as well as the kick and then if you compare any pop mix uh, of any time to a metal mix you'll find that they're sort of incomparable so I'll play a rockier song by Bring Me to see that like the kick and the snare and the vocals aren't like as pushed I don't 
don't even necessarily like the sound of the snare or the kick in Fletcher song because it's just like a pop uh, sample, they're not even real drums. But when I go from Fletcher's song to Bring Me The Horizon's song, I just feel uh, Bring Me's song sounds like shit. So I'll do the same test and on one side I'll uh, have Bring Me's song and uh, I'll put Bad Omens on the other side. So the kick and the snare and the low end of the mix, the bass, aren't even present. Like It's like they're gone. When I go from Bad Omens to Bring Me, it's like all of that is gone. Now this concludes uh, the boring comparison part of this video and now I'm gonna show you why is that. Why the Bad Omens uh, new album is so good and how it's able to compete with pop mixes. Now I'm going to unveil the secret behind those massive drum tones and that massive low end. So if you haven't yet guessed it, which I'm assuming you have, the drums and the bass are layered with synths. And I know you'll be like, oh okay, why, why is that a big secret? I could take some synth samples and just layer them with my drums and that will be it. Why, why, why haven't people been doing that if it sounds so good? And yes, you're right, the idea is very, very simple. It's just like putting synth samples to enhance your real drums. But in reality, I've been trying to do that for years and I've had the idea like ages ago. I, I remember myself trying to do that like maybe seven years ago. But every time I tried, uh, the drums just didn't sound right. Like when you put samples, like synth, electronic drums, uh, layered with real drums, it, ju it just doesn't sound right. And by that, what I mean is basically electronic drums just make real drums sound like shit. And then a couple of years back, I started thinking about it again and I was like, all right, I'll try to layer real drums again. And I did layer the kick and it did improve things. Um, but uh, although I was doing sound design back then for like synths and like uh, lead sounds, pods, I was layering guitars with synths. I was uh, layering the bass with synths and all of that. I didn't know how to do sound design for drums meaning you sound design methods to create electronic drum sounds. I tried layering the snare as well back then, uh, but it didn't work. So again, I abandoned the idea of layering the snare with uh, electronic drums. The past couple of years, I've been having loads of uh, pop clients, totally unrelated to metal. Um, I was trying to find good electronic drum sounds to make pop music, but I would always get a little bit disappointed. So then I was like, okay, I know sound design, I learn uh, how to sound design electronic drums. And then when I learned how to sound design electronic drums, uh, the idea of layering the snare popped into my head again. Plus I managed to make my own kick sample. And then since I made those two, I was like, all right, I'll layer the bass with something super, super low as well, something super subby, and that also worked. And since the past like few months, all of my uh, kicks, snares, and uh, basses are all layered uh, with electronic sounds. So I'm gonna play you this very mix, uh, first with all the layers and then without. So you have to be in headphones or good speakers to listen to that. I don't know if you would be able to listen to the difference uh, in your phones. So I'm hoping you're uh, listening to these three good speakers or headphones. So I'll show you what I've done here. So uh, the first layer, 
Today is your lucky day because I'm gonna be giving away uh, a free kick sample. Uh, so this preset that you see here in Serum uh, is bounced to a single one shot kick drum, uh, which I'm gonna be giving away for free to you in return for you to pre-save my song on Spotify. Seriously, it's a banger. Go listen to it when it's out. So as always, I use the most amazing synth of all time to make uh, the kick. And it's not super complicated to make a kick within Serum. What's complicated is to make this kick work well with real drums. And especially with metal, uh, there is the massive problem that there usually are uh, too many like different patterns within a song. And sometimes like on a chorus or like a super slow like main breakdown, there might be very few kicks, but then there might be riffs within the same song where like there's like 16s or like triplets and that, or like even super fast uh, double jump pedals like in 13 seconds or like 16 triplets. So there's a few problems with that that I needed to overcome. First one being the different uh, speeds within patterns or like different parts of the song. So the way I had to overcome that problem is create different kick presets for uh, different passages within the same song. So this one you'll see is named kick sub long. Then there's the kick sub medium and the kick sub short. They all have a few key differences, but the main one is uh, the DK, the attack, and the hold, which as you can probably tell, makes the kick either tighter or having a longer DK. And also at the same time, come up with something that would create a sense of velocity. So like obviously real drums have different velocities, and if you have like good VST drum libraries, every hit, even if it's the exact same velocity, it has different samples. So I somehow had to emulate that within Serum in order to make this preset blend well with real drums, which was also the main problem that I was having all these years when I was trying to blend one-shot samples with either real drums or uh, VST libraries. So this preset in particular with a kick mostly works as a sub enhancer to the kick and I'm gonna solo it for you to see what it sounds like. Now what's amazing about this patch like I've said before is that I've emulated the different velocities and when you hit different velocities on your keyboard on when you program different velocities it's not only the volume that changes but the whole tone of the kick and several stuff uh, change which makes it blend super well with real drums. So I'm just gonna, like my keyboard is gonna have latency so it might sound a little bit weird, but you, you'll get what I mean. You'll see that there's tons of different tones. So other than the quality of the sound that I was struggling to get with other libraries, I couldn't also get the uh, different tones that you get with playing different velocities. Next I want to show you the snare and with the snare I had massive trouble finding a sample that works well with real drums. I never found one so I took the decision to make my own. So here is the serum preset. This one's quite complicated, like you can't, you can't see too many oscillators in that and you think the waveforms are really simple but there's all this stuff going on here, uh, level going to the chorus, level going to the chorus here, too many LFO, this LFO uh, is going to the level here, another LFO is going to the cutoff filter, another LFO is doing some stuff uh, on the effects. So this one is a really complicated patch and I have it muted, I'm not using this uh, because sadly when you play the MIDI notes they have a, a little bit of latency and the snare flams. So I need to balance the snare, uh, add an audio track, align it and then I can blend it with my real snare and it sounds like this.
Now, you would think this sample by itself sounds like shit, but when you blend it with a real snare, uh, it works miracles and I'll explain to you why. So, you would think it has too much top end, but in reality, if you see the frequency spectrum here, you see, you'll see you see that it has loads of low end in this area that the real snare doesn't. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you both. So on the left, you'll see the real snare is losing all its low end below 200 Hertz. While the electronic snare has all those frequencies down here. But uh, there would be a massive problem if the low frequencies of the snare lasted for as long as the snare does. So, so what was uh, a little bit complicated, I mean it's not really complicated if you know sound design. The idea is complicated but once you have the idea uh, the execution is uh, pretty easy. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that with the electronic snare uh, you can't have all those low frequencies uh, last for as long as the high frequencies last. So the decay of the real snare uh, might be about like maybe I don't know like 0 0.8 seconds or like one second. Let's just say it's uh, the decay of the real snare is one second, right? So it lasts a while. Pew, pew. Now the idea behind the electronic snare having all the low end is to make the snare super fat, but only for a moment. So I'm gonna show you here the transients of the electronic snare. So you almost see two different sounds here in uh, the electronic snare. And that first part here, this is how long those low frequencies last. You cannot have those low frequencies last for that long on a snare because otherwise it would sound like a shitty kick. And the second part of this sound, this part is what's the top end. So low end lasts for a while, split second, a few milliseconds, and then this is the high part, the crispiness of uh, the snare. Why did I just not use the low end of that preset to uh, layer the snare and just make it sound beefier. The idea for that, uh, including the high part of the electronic snare drum, I would notice that the snare in the pop mix didn't only sound uh, punchier and uh, beefier and uh, as if it had more low end. I could also hear the snare cutting through more, being sharper, so anyway, I came up with this electronic snare drum and now I'm adding all the low end that the real snare doesn't have and all that sharpness on the very, very top end of the snare. Now I know I've mentioned again in the past that I layer uh, either uh, the bass or the guitars with synths, but uh, what I haven't been doing and what I haven't mentioned I hadn't been doing that since super recently actually, is that I now layer uh, the bass with uh, a sub bass and I have been using other synths to layer the bass with but this is solely just a sub bass. So here is the preset for it and uh, visually uh, the sub bass looks like the most uh, simple of all the presets but in reality uh, those LFOs and the envelope took me ages to figure out because what's hard uh, with creating a sub bass that you want to sound bassier than the electric bass in its creation and at its nature because uh, low frequencies have a really lo a physically really long wavelength uh, that instantly creates the problem that how would you make a patch uh, that's so low uh, yet has to play so many fast notes and so many fast riffs that come with metal because again, what this layer of synth does to the mix is it's filling up the space that the actual electric bass, either VST or real bass, doesn't have. And it's way easier to create like a sound like this for like trap or pop where there's like 
way fewer notes per second rather than making a preset like this one where there's so many notes all the time and the bass has to be as consistent as possible as low as possible so that it competes with pop mixes and uh, this is what this one sounds like I'll mute this for a second so that you can hear the difference. I'll A-B it, actually. So you can hear that the difference is massive and you'll be like, oh, uh, is that because uh, you've removed the low end from the electric bass? No, I actually haven't done that. I swear to God, uh, you will see there's no, there's nothing that removes the low end. This is side chain compression. This works only when there is a kick. This doesn't work all the time. So I'm using a multiband compressor uh, so that only the low end ducks on the real bass and then on the sub bass, the whole signal ducks because there's no top end anyway. And now I'll just mute the sub bass and the sub kick. Now, when I mute all of these samples, it literally reminds me uh, the mix that I played you earlier which was uh, low by wage work and I literally remember when low came out at 2019 I was like holy shit this is an amazing song yes but the production oh my fucking god I loved it back then I thought it sounded amazing and now four years later I feel it sounds so outdated and I'm sorry to say this but if you don't catch up and if you don't use tools like that, you're never gonna sound modern and you're never gonna be able to compete with these uh, really good modern metal productions. And if you wanna be ahead of the game, I would suggest uh, you get all of these tools right away and start using them in your mixes right away. I've put together a presets and samples pack called Metal to Pop. It includes three presets and three samples uh, of the sub kick. Sadly, if you don't have serum, the samples you get with the kick are one shots and you don't have the ability to uh, play with the velocities, which makes a massive difference, but it's better than nothing. And then the snare has one preset and one sample and with the bass, there's only one preset. There's no samples because there's I, I would need to make a whole uh, VST library with that. But if you don't have Serum, I'm suggesting you should go buy it anyway because I'm going to be putting out a lot of stuff like that. I'm going to be putting out a lot of preset packs for Serum. Links for the Metal to Pop Samples Presets Pack in the description of this video. In the new Shopify store, you'll also find uh, the previously released phases, samples and preset pack, which you can also get now if you weren't feeling safe with the previous payment method. Until next time, stay metal!